Good. I remember the whole beginning as a succession of flights and drops, a little seesaw of the right throbs and the wrong. His untimely death two years ago left them under the care of my parents, and the death of my parents has left them with me. Now please don't misunderstand, I'm fond of children, and they are both delightful, but I am a bachelor and my affairs keep me occupied in London and require my full attention. I simply have the sort of lifestyle for children. You understand, it's all terribly awkward. Yes. And I'm sure I've made mistakes. I feel sorry for the poor pups done for them as best I can. The real problem is that they have no other relations. For a little over a year now, they've been living at Bly, my old country home in Essex. Well, the boy's away at school, but he'll be back in a day or two for the summer holiday, and the girl's with the housekeeper, Miss Gross. They had a governess who did quite well for them, too, but we had the misfortune to lose her. How old are you, my dear, if you don't mind my asking? Just twenty, sir. And this would be your first position? Yes. Well, Miss Gross is an excellent woman. She was my mother's maid. She handles things quite capably below stairs. And the rest are the best I could find. I even parted with my own man for a time. But now I want someone younger. Someone to take charge of the place. To teach the children and to govern them. A, a new governess? Yes. You haven't asked about compensation. I wish to be sure that we are both comfortable. Oh, why? Would that suffice? Uh, it's quite more than I expected. <laughs> yes. There is, however, a condition. What to others, it? it proved prohibitive. What is it? That you are to be solely responsible for everything. That no matter what happens, you must never trouble me. Never write, never complain, but use instead your own best judgment. Do you understand? Yes, I, I see. As it is important that you do, it bears repeating. You are never to trouble me. Never. Should I engage you, I would be placing my trust entirely in your hands. I would be placing the children entirely in your hands. Because I cannot be troubled. That is precisely the point. The former governess, how did you lose her? Oh, you may as well know. She died. Oh, not at Bly. She went away. It was awkward. Um, when she died, there was no alternative but school for the boy and Miss Gross to look after the girl. I promised the children didn't, didn't kill her. <laughs> Such a pretty laugh. You know, when you smile, your face is really quite pretty. Yet you hesitate. What can I do to persuade you, my dear? Shall I leave? No, no. Very well. But I do beseech you, my dear, I need someone special. You're bright and young and pretty, and I'm sure that children will love you. And I need your help, my dear. I very much need your help. Please, tell me you will give it. Yes, I, I will.
to you, Mrs. Gross. Welcome to blindness. And this must be Flora. Oh, it is a pleasure to meet you, Flora. Curtsy very nicely. Thank you. How was your trip, Miss? It was lovely and in such a beautiful house. It was all in silhouette as we pulled up the tall terraces and I could hear the rooks calling from the lake. I had no idea. Your house is like something out of a storybook. I'm a little shy at first. So am I. In fact, <laughs> let's pretend that I'm terribly shy. Someone you've never met before from some whole other part of the world. And it's your job to try and think of a way to draw me out. It is. Only, I don't even know if you can help me. Have you got any ideas? Hmm. Perhaps you'd like to meet my dolls. I think I should like that very much. I'll get them. What a beautiful little girl. Oh, you've been natural way with her, miss. And little boys, he just as remarkable. Well, if you're this taken with Miss Flora, I'm sure you'd be quite carried away by young Master Miles. I'm afraid I'm rather easily carried away. That's what happened in London. You mean their uncle? Well, Miss, I venture you're not the first, and I doubt you'll be the last. I... I don't pretend to be. But to be here at last, to finally have something happening to me, I will love it here. I know that I will. I felt for so long that I might be making a, a mistake. A mistake? I had a few bad days thinking it over. I, I, I don't know what I expect. It's something positively dreary, and, and to be solely in charge, such responsibility. Well, Miss... The lie isn't like old country homes, old dinners and parties. It's quiet, what, with the master gone and all, but it's a good place for children. I quite agree. I grew up in the country. But doesn't their uncle visit them? It, it, it's a terrible thing to neglect a child. Almost never miss. His affairs keep him busy in town. I see. I'm glad you're here, miss. God knows I am. But is it a lot of stuff? Oh, not very. There's a Miss Luke, which looks after the horses. Yes, she brought my trunk in from the coach. And Mrs. Riley, the cook, and the two maids, and the gardener three times a week. I'll see you meet everyone very naturally. I'm sure they'd be very pleased to meet you. It would be as charming as a charming story to meet someone here, to turn a corner suddenly and see them. Why does Flora sleep nights? As she'd been sleeping with me, miss. Do you think after tonight she could sleep in my room? I, I think it would help break the ice between us, if it's all right with you. Miss, you're in charge. Naturally, Miss Flora will sleep wherever you think best. And when does little Miles return from school? Oh, day after tomorrow, with the mail coach. I was thinking of meeting him there. I'm sure that'd be a nice surprise. Here they are. Oh, they are lovely. Tell me about them. Well, this is the little girl, and this is the governor. Who's this? The other governess. <laughs> is she so ungovernable? Only when she has the mind to be. Yes, I see. There's something in her expression, too, and such lovely dresses, only they're rather heavy for the time of year. Perhaps we can make some new ones. Could we? Oh, I've arrived back. You're more than welcome to, miss. Oh, yes, please. We'll see. But it'll cost you a hug. <laughs> and now I want you to show me the house. I want you to show me everything. Oh, I'll help with the bags, miss. Come on. I'm glad you're here, miss. God knows I am. Come on, then. Sorry to hear, first night in a new place and all. Although, for a moment I thought I heard someone sobbing. Must have been Miss Flora, what cried herself to sleep. Yes. Uh, and then later, a, a footstep, very light, just outside my door. I probably imagined it, you must think me excitable. <laughs> Not at all, Miss, first night in a new place and all. Yes. Although, next it will be Mad Woman in the Attic, or the Mystery of Udolfo. <laughs> My room is it's beautiful. I'm glad, Miss. It must be one of the best in the house. Such full draperies and a looking glass like nothing that I have ever seen. I can see myself in it from head to toe. I'm sure that's a pretty sight, Miss. Am I pretty? Of course, Miss. 
growing up in such a large family, if I was, no one ever noticed. I see you, I saw you, I see you, I saw you. Mrs. Gross, wouldn't you have heard if Flora cried in her sleep? Well, I might not have missed, I'm a heavy sleeper. I see you, I saw you, I see you, I saw Miss you. Miss Flora! Look what you've done, gone and tracked dirt in this floor, which just clean this morning. Oh dear, I I'm sorry, Mrs. Gross. Well, take your shoes off now, there's a dear. Tomorrow, maybe go to the lake. We might, if it doesn't rain. It's my favorite place. Once when we were there, mouse threw rocks at a dead fish. Mrs. Gross taught us not to play with its eyeballs. <laughs> I'd expect they'd make good marbles. That's what we thought, but Mrs. Gross said, ooh, so we left them alone. I see you, I saw you, I see you, I saw you. Well, she's very independent. Oh, you observe that. I'd expect it comes of being the youngest. I wouldn't know, miss. I was a middle child. My mum used to say, I don't care what family you're in. If you're in the middle, you're always in the middle. It's hard to argue that. Do you feel a chill? No, miss. My sister and I shared a room at the vicarage. Father was not exactly in step with the Church of England. There was a statue of the Virgin Mary in our room with its arms outstretched, one foot stepping forward to crush the serpent. That was the last thing we would see before going to sleep. At night, Father would stay up late writing his sermons again. You could see the statue from the light under the door. We knew that its eyes were open, but sometimes we imagined that its lips moved. Sometimes I thought we made them move slowly by believing that they did. And I never told my father. Not because he wouldn't have believed me. I, I don't know whether he would have believed me or not, but I never told him because I felt guilty. I was supposed to love the mother of Christ and I was afraid of her instead and even if God forgave me, I wasn't sure my father would. Are you right, miss? There's a breeze. Perhaps it will ring. Look, miss, a letter for you. For me? Luke said ring it in. Is it from my uncle? Not exactly. It's from Miles' school. Your uncle has sent it along without opening it. This is we. Flora, let him play to you. Yes, miss. What is it, miss? Miles has been dismissed from school. Dismissed at, don't understand, not the old. For the holidays, yes, but it says that Miles may never go back at all. Why not? Read it for yourself. Oh, I can't, miss. I I'm sorry. Um, they go into no particulars. They only say that it will be impossible to keep him. He's an injury to others. Master Miles? Him an injury? He's scarce ten years old. You might as well believe it to the little lady. You mean that Miles is never bad? Well, miss, all the angels I know are up in heaven. I do not mind a child who is spirited, but to be an injury to others. It's not his fault. I mean, whatever it is, it, it can't be. It, there must be a mistake, miss. Write to their uncle. No, He'll know what to do. No, he told me never to bother him. He was very clear about it. It bore repeating. Then what will you do? Nothing yet. I must see him for myself, maybe then I'll know what to do. That's it, miss. Meet him at the coach. Then see if you build it, little boy. I'm glad you're here, miss. Tell me everything that's happened. Go on. Maybe. Of course, run along. Well, he doesn't much like it here. Oh, it's a good place for children. Well, miss, 
What do you think? The child is upset. You saw him. He laughed and chatted all the way here. He said, I'm so glad to be home. It must have been a mistake. He's too good for that dreadful school, that's all. Oh, you're under a spell already, miss. I suppose that I am. But I don't see how anyone can carry a bad name with such an innocence. It must be a mistake. Then, what will you say to their uncle? Nothing at all. And to Master Miles? Nothing yet. We'll have to discuss it eventually, of course, but for now, he can take lessons with me and we'll sort out the matter of school later. As you say, miss. Is he, as I know he would wish me to do? Uh, doesn't the gardener do that? Oh, sometimes I water the herbs for cook. My mom used to say it's the surest way for rain. Look, my heels under there. Don't fly away too far. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gross. What was the woman who was here before? What was she? Oh, what was she like? The former governess. Miss Jessel, she was young and pretty, like you. He seems to like us young and pretty. He did. It was the way he liked everyone. The master, I mean, that's his way. But of whom did you speak first? Of him. The master. Who else? Mrs. Groves. Was Miss Jessel particular? Particular? Uh, careful about things. About some things, yes, but not others. I'm not one to speak ill of the dead, Miss. Not the dead that lived in this house. Yes, um, how did she die? You've already wanted that one. I, I really don't know, Miss. She went away. She was taken ill? Not as such. She went away for a short holiday, as it were, and never came back. Excuse me, Miss Alvarez, inside. Of course. Uh, Mrs. Gross. Yes, Miss. Have Luke care of some water. Miles shall have a bath after his trip. Yes, Miss. And have the maids set out the children's clothes for church tomorrow morning. As you say, Miss. As you say, Miss. Two of them, a boy and a girl. I know that they will love you. I need someone. Younger to take charge of the place, I need someone. Special. Such a pretty laugh. May I kiss your hand? My lovely, lovely governess. Margaret, and they spoke to her when she was alone and told her what to do. You mean their lips moved? I suppose that they did. 
They weren't angels, not dangerous. Well, you're my angels. Go on, Flora. Then naked and white, all the backs left behind, they rise upon clouds and sport on the wind. That doesn't rhyme. And the angel told Tom, if he'd been a good boy, he'd have gone for his father and never want joy. And so Tom awoke, and we rose in the dark, and we got with our bags and our brushes to work. And though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. For if all did their duty, they did not need to fear harm. Very good, Laura. You read very nicely. Thank you. I thought there might be a moral at the end. Did you? Was that a song of innocence or experience? Well, what do you think? It depends. On what? And whether you believe the moral. <laughs> you are precocious. Why don't you pick something now? Whatever I like. Yes, dear, whatever you like. What does precocious mean? It means knowing more than you should at your age. Oh. When I die, will I become an angel? Of course you will. All good girls do. But what if I were a bad girl? Are the bad angels? <laughs> I don't believe that either of you is bad. We might be. You know, you can't tell. Why do children have to clean the chimneys? They don't need more deeds against the law. But why do they used to? Because they were small and could fit up easily, and lots of them were orphans. Did the children want to do it? No, dear, probably not. I found one. Who rides so late with the wind blows wild, the father on horseback touching his child. He carries the boy in his sheltering arm. He holds him close to keep him from harm. Don't talk to me. <laughs> My son, you are shivering. What do you see? The Arrow King, father, he's looking for me. The Arrow King is there with his crown and train. My son, that is only the mist on the plain. Darling child, come along with me. And lovely games I'll play with thee. And spinning tales my mother told me. And spinning garments made of gold. My father, my father, can you not hear? The Arrow King is whispering in my ear. Hush, my son. That is only the breeze. The leaves are whispering in the trees. Lovely child, come along with me. My daughters will tend to thee tenderly. And every night they dance and leap and whisper. They sing me softly to sleep. My father, my father, can you not see? The Arrow King's daughters are coming for me. Hush, my son. There is nothing to fear. There's only the one of us drawing near. My beauty excites me. Come with me, pray, or else, foolish child, I shall drag me away. My father, my father, don't lose your hold. The Arrow King has touched me. His hand is cold. The father shudders. The wind blows wild. He holds to his chest the shuddering child. He reaches the courtyard and looks down in tread. There in his arms, the boy lies. Good night. Look, Miles, it stopped raining. <laughs> go to your rooms and get your things. We'll go to church.
Perhaps it is someone from no, the village. No, I, I didn't tell you, but I made sure. Is he a gentleman? He's like nothing. God help me. If I know what he is, the man is a horror. A horror? He looked at me just as casually as if he were inspecting property. His eyes measured me up and down as if I were the one trespassing, as if he had every right to be here. Oh my God, where are the children? Oh, it's so right, miss. They're in the school room. I said we'd call for them when we were ready. Shouldn't we be getting to church, miss? I can't go to church, not now. You mean you're afraid? Oh, you mean you're not with a strange man peering in at the windows. It's my duty to be concerned, my responsibility to be. What does he want? I should think to ask. Do you think he's still on the grounds? I don't know. And you say he was looking in and you saw him clearly? As clearly as I see you now. What was he like? It was like nothing, nothing. He stood about so tall, you know, so very tall, and, and he, he was pale, with, with dark eyebrows. Clean shaven, there may have been whiskers, I, I don't know. Thin lips, a cruel, cruel mouth into his eyes. Yes. They were fixed. Intent. He had a predatory look, but what struck me the most is that it was not for I he had come. He was looking for someone. What is it? Do you know him? Would you say he was handsome? Uh, uh, handsome, yes, but not wholesome. And, and how was he dressed? I only saw him from the waist up, but yes. I had the strangest feeling. He was wearing somebody else's clothes, like an actor. An actor. He wore a fine waistcoat. He was dressed like a gentleman, but I don't think anyone would ever mistake him for a gentleman. No, never a gentleman. You know him. Quint. Quint, who is that? Peter Quint, the master's man. When the master came down with Quint for some time last year to help look after the place. When the master left, Quint stayed home. Sometimes, sometimes he would wear the master's clothes. Oh, oh well, this is such a stranger. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I, I, I'm here now, why would their uncle send Quint back? Master didn't send for Quint, miss, he couldn't have. Why not? Because he died. Died? Yes, miss. Peter Quint's dead. You think I'm mad? Miss, I never saw nothing, not a shadow of a shadow. I only saw how frightened you were. And thank God for that! I don't know how I should bear it otherwise. Did my face really show? Quite startled me. You. You say you thought he was looking for someone else? Yes, and, and I know who. He was looking for little Miles. Good Lord, Master Miles? How do you know? Because I know, because I, I saw him. But, but what if the child should see him? That's exactly what he wants. The child? No, God forbid, the man. I don't understand this. Nor do I. I only know what I saw. It does strike me that neither of the children has ever so much as mentioned what, Miss Quint? All the time that they spent with him, if he was around for so long, why never so much as a casual word? Doesn't that strike as peculiar? Like is not Miss Flora to remember him, Miss. She was so young and I'm sure she had no reason to spend time with him. And Miles. Quint and the boy were like a dog in a shadow. It was Quint's doing. He was much too free. Too free with Miles. Too free with everyone. And you never told their uncle. He never wanted to hear. You've met him, miss. You know what he's like. 
Like you said, it's a terrible thing to neglect a child, Quint. Pay attention. I dare say I was wrong for letting him spend so much time with the boy, but I was afraid. Afraid of what? Quint! Of what he might do! I have it from you then that Quint was bad. Like a snake. But you left him alone with the boy. The children were in your child. They were not, miss. I know my place. I know what is and what isn't for me to say. Quint was the master's own man, and you, Miss Jessel, she was in charge as you are now. And how could you bear it? I couldn't! I couldn't. I, I couldn't and I can't now. How did he die? The way he deserved to. A worker from the village found him lying on the side of the road one morning. There was an inquest, but nothing came of it. He might have taken a wrong turn on his way back from the public house one night. He might have been drunk and slept on the house. There was a nasty wound on the back of his head and a stain. People knew Quint. People knew what he was. I bet he was grinning, unrepentant, even in death. There were reasons Peter Quint might strike his head on the ground one night and die. We are cut off here. Alright, we're alone. But we are together. I am what she wasn't counting on. I saw that in his face. He wasn't expecting me any more than I was expecting him. This is my chance. I have a duty here to protect the children, to stand as a screen, a shield between them and this monster. Well then let the coward horror appear to me. I absolutely invite it. I am not afraid. The more that I see, the less that the children shall, and I shall save them. But I need you to stand by me. Do you, Mrs. Groves, tell me that you believe in me? I can do it, but not without you at my side. You have to promise me. I'll stand by you, Miss. Ah, sunflower, weary of time, who countest the steps of the sun, seeking after that sweet golden clime where the traveler's journey is done. That was lovely, Flora. Thank you. It's from the book we're reading. Songs of Innocence and Experience. Who taught you to sing it? I don't remember. Isn't the lake beautiful? It's very beautiful. I know. It's my favorite place. Why do I have to wear a bonnet? A lady always wears a hat or bonnet when she goes outside. That isn't really a reason, you know. What are you writing? A letter. To my uncle? No. To my sister. Oh. Are you telling her about me? Of course. Perhaps if I wrote to my uncle, he'd pay us a visit. Perhaps you should. I wonder if I've ever seen a sunflower. I'm sure you have. There were plenty at the vicarage. In gorse and blackthorn and bilberry. What's that? Hawthorn. It has white blossoms and it blooms in the spring. Ooh. And that one? Dog rose. It also blooms in the spring and its berries are called hips. So <laughs> why? I don't know. Ooh. What's that one? That is heaven. It has purple flowers and it blooms all summer like a faithful friend. I think they're the prettiest. I think so too. Only the lavender, not purple. Well, purplish. You know that your name means flower. I know, and Miles is a soldier. That's right. I could be a soldier too, if I wanted, like Joe Vaughn. I'm sure that you could. Only sometimes it's nice just being with the ladies. You talk in your sleep. I do not. Yes, you do, and make all sorts of weird noises. Well, I'm glad that I amuse you. Last night, I dreamed someone was in bed with me. Did you? 
Mm -hmm. I've dreamed about it lots of times before. Do you believe in ghosts? Oh. I suppose I've never given it much of a thought. Mrs. Gross says there's no such thing. But there are fairies and leprechauns and water horses because they stand to reason. I see. See that? That's Hawthorne. I see, and that's Dog Rose. It has hips. Why are they called hips? Why a lot of questions you ask. I know, I'm precocious. <laughs> What's that? That's Heather. It's what about Heather Keller? What a lot governesses know. From now on, you sleep in my room. I hope I'm going to be friends. Our sunflower, weary of time, who counters the steps of the sun. Seeking after that sweet golden climb, for the traveler's journey is done. Something 
gathers or, or, or crouches. It's something that they want. It's something that they come back for. He always did as he wished. With Miss Jessel, with all the girls. Mrs. Gross, why was Miles while I was at the lake with Flora? In the schoolroom, reading a book, he said you knew. Did anyone look in on him? I don't know. Why? Thus far, they have not appeared in the house. Perhaps they can't. I believe that in the future it's better we hadn't separated.
I've been blinded. I see that now, blinded by my own love for the children. But there's more to it than they pretend. When, when Miles told me how he got Flora to help each look outside last night, that is when I realized that there must have been secret understandings between them all along. Well, Miles was with Quint. Where was Flora? With Miss Jessel. Don't you see? See what, Miss? It all lies in half a dozen words, in what they haven't said. They've been deceiving us. Deceiving us how? Oh, I don't know. By never so much as mentioning their dead companions, by never talking about all the time that they spent with him, by never mentioning Miles, she she from remember school. in the least know what? For wickedness? Yes. For what else then? When he beautiful and clever and perfect, is he stupid? Is he untidy? Is he ill-natured? Is he infirm? <laughs> Look at them. They are so good and lovely that it is unnatural. But what if their loveliness is a policy and a fraud? What if instead of playing games, they are talking horrors? Good Lord, miss, you do change. Oh, I do not change. I simply make it out. You have it, my dreadful boldness of thought, and that's why you hang back. You saw them. Mrs. Groves, they are not ours. They are his and that woman's. Quint and Miss Jessel. Quint and Miss Jessel. They come back for them, miss. They were infamous, the both of them. But they're dead, miss. Even if you're right and they do come back, what can they do? When Flora and I saw her, Miss Jessel was on the other side of the lake. How deep would you say the water is there? I don't know. Deep enough to... Miss, you don't suppose... I don't know what would have happened if I had not been there, but I can guess. They mean to shorten the distance between them. Miss, for pity's sake, Right to You know home. that I cannot. But surely he didn't mean this. Right to him, yes. Tell him what? Your house is haunted. Evil spirits are after your children. Only I can see them. That is charming news from the person you had to take charge. Well, all I can do is please keep it to the front of the office. Jocelyn, Jaime. What? And hire a You're friend. You're right to him. Please keep it to the front in the office. There's a man who writes it down for me in the village. Miss, bring him here. Surely then he can see for himself. Oh. Everything has failed. No, Miss. How oh, I, how oh, everything is broken down. Miss. This was my first appointment. He placed his trust, his trust, and, and the children entirely in my hands, Miss. Never to write. Never to take my place. Perhaps you want him here because you want to hear his amusement. His contempt for this fine machinery that I have set in motion. A country parson's daughter trying to call a gentleman's attention to her slight and choice. Listen to me! If you ever lose your head so far as to send it out. Mrs. Grounds. There, Miss. I don't know what to do. I don't shield them at all. I'm completely in the dark. After that sweet golden climb, where the traveler's journey is done. Where the youth pined away with desire, and the pale virgin shrouded in snow. Arise from your graves and aspire, where my sunflower wishes to go. You are lovely, my dear. Thank you, my dear. And the children love you already. Do you really think so? My lovely, my lovely governess. Who is it? Oh, it's you. 